So I'm not gonna really write x is bigger than right. Why, right? I have to use something. But, so I'm gonna use the relational the relational operate operators. So we have bigger than, um, less than, equal, and 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 or. Let's go one after one. If x is bigger than y, the syntax for it, how do we code it? Is we're gonna use the word if, and inside of those parentheses, we're gonna so we're gonna write x bigger than y. If y is bigger than x, okay, we're gonna do the same thing, but the y is gonna be on the bigger side. Now, how do we check equal? We don't use one equal sign, we use two. And the reason for that, because one equal sign would do assignment, will take the value of x and put it inside of y. And we don't want, we just wanna check if they are equal, okay? So we're gonna use the word if, and inside of the parentheses, we're gonna put two equal signs to see if they're equal. Now what happens if we wanna check two things? We wanna have two things happening together. Hello? So we're gonna do, so let's read it first. If x is bigger than y and x is also bigger than z, we wanna check two things. How do we put two together? So we're gonna use two ampersand to combine the two conditional here. And we're gonna say only if two are happening, two of them are true, go into the nested line and do whatever we want to do. And how do we do or? If we want a conditional that either this one or this one, instead of using two ampersand, we're gonna use two lines, okay? So it's gonna be either x is bigger than y or x is bigger than z. And only if either one of there is happening, we're gonna go into the next line and do whatever we wrote there. Okay, let's talk about arithmetic operators. So we're gonna do many calculations today. Um, um, and we're gonna use many arithmetic operators. So there are some of the straightforward ones that we know from math. Plus for adding, minus for subtracting, um, uh, multi, multi, multiplication, and division. But what I want to focus on is the three down there. The modulo, the plus plus, and the minus minus. And I also want to say another word about this, the division one. Okay, so for that, okay, first I'm going to go over this and then I'm going to do a little demonstration. Okay, so when we, in our program, declared variables that are whole number, integer, int, remember the int? Basically, all of the operators that the result's gonna be a fraction, we're not gonna really see the fraction part. We're just gonna take the, uh, the quotient part, okay, the whole number of it. Um, so, for instance, if we're gonna say um, seven divided to two, Okay, so it's four and a half, right? Uh, sorry, three and a half. But if we declare integer, we're just gonna see three, okay? And it's gonna be, in a minute, I'm gonna show you a demonstration of that. Modulo, what is modulo? So modulo, basically, it's a very nice operator. It gives us the reminder. So if we take, let's look at this example. We wanna do a modulo C. So our A is 10, our C is 7. So um, if you want to do A modulo C, what's happening here? We're going to divide 10 by 7. And we know it's 1 and the reminder is 3. But the modulo will give us only the 3, only the reminder. Okay? What is plus plus? When we put plus plus next to a variable, it's just going to increment it by 1 and assign it to the variable. So if we have the variable a, int a, see, and we're gonna do a plus plus, so a is gonna be incremented by one, it's gonna be 11, and its value is gonna change. So we do two things, we increment it, and we save the change inside of our variable. And the same thing with the minus minus, we decrement it. So a minus minus will decrement a by one, from 10 it's gonna be nine, and we're gonna assign the, the result inside of A. Now, let's do some more uh, examples. So I wanna open here. Okay, 
that's going to be my whiteboard today. So let's say we have int a equal to this number, OK? So first of all, the syntax. Int is just uh, we declare that we're going to need a space in memory for a whole number, OK? And a is going to be its name. And we assigned it the number 1, 2, 3, 4, which is um, now I want to do what is a divided to 100 okay can you tell me what's the result will be this will be this right but since we have a whole number it's actually going to be this okay now, let's do another thing. Okay, we can do, it's going to be this. Now, let's do a modulo 10. Any, let's say we're, we're not, I mean, we're taking the 1, 2, 3, 4 number, not the 12. A modulo 10, who can tell me what could that be? It's going to be just a reminder. 0.34. Well, it's 10, not 100, but you're right. You're, you're in the right direction. So it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4. We're going to divide it to 10, but we're going to take the reminder. So that would be exactly. So it's going to be 1.4, but we're going to get back. A is going to be 4. Not A, wherever we're going to assign it. But basically, the result of that will be just the 4. OK, so if we got that, let's continue. Oh, I do want to show you the example of the plus, plus, and minus, minus. OK, so let's do we want to increment A in 1. So A plus plus, basically, don't forget the semicolon, would be assigning the result of adding in 1. So it will be 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 5, we are adding 1, but, and it's going to be inside A, so it would be, be A equal to that. But if we're going to do A minus minus, what's that going to be? Yep. And A is going to get this assignment, okay? It's going to be assigned to A. So now wherever in the code we're going to reach, we're going to access A, it's going to be the new thing. Okay. Okay, let's continue then. Okay, so arithmetic operators, order of operations. Just like in math, um, this is the order of operations. So first of all, calculate expression inside of the parentheses. Then calculate multiplication, division, and modulo. Then calculate addition and subtractions. And when all expressions have the same priority, just calculate from left to right. Okay, so let's do this example. So what's gonna what's gonna be first? Inside of the parentheses, right? So four plus five is nine. Uh, three divided to two, hmm, interesting. These are whole numbers. So it's gonna be one, right? Um, and then and then okay, we can do it in the maybe here. So let's see, what do we have? So 4 plus 5 is 9. 3 divided to 2 is 1. Oh. Uh, then we have two priorities. We can do the multiplication or the module. So let's do the multiplication. Let's do 9 equal 9. And then let's do 9 modulo 5. How much is that? Um, everybody can guess. Yes. And then 4 plus 1 is 5. You get it? It's clear? Good. Let's continue. OK, project 2. 
consecutive digits. Okay. Given a three-digit number, print consecutive if the three digits are in increasing consecutive order. In fact, not consecutive if the three digits are not in increasing consecutive order. So let's see some examples. One, two, three, consecutive, right? Five, six, seven, consecutive. Three, nine, zero, no. One, twenty-nine, no. Okay, you got the point? Okay, so before we start, I will start with you a little bit and then you're gonna be a little bit on your own trying that, okay? So let's look here, let's see. Okay. So we have, what do we need? What do we need in our project, okay? So the project is gonna be in our main function. Okay, this is where we're going to write our code. Okay, so we need a three-digit number. So number, what kind of integer? Integer. So we're going to do. We're going to need int number, and don't forget semicolon. You can also, if you want, start it like given initial initialize it. Give it like any number you want, right? You can initialize. It. Okay, and then we need to check about the numbers. So we need to think about an algorithm, how to do it, but I'm going to give you a hint that we're going to need to separate the digits somehow. And how are we going to separate the digits? We're going to use modulo and we're going to use division. So if, for instance, if we want, oh, we're supposed to be three digits, right? So for instance, if we're going to put like... Um, If we want to do this, how can I get the three? That's plus. I, I just need the three. Yeah. I just want to take it out. A hint, it's going to be either division or modulo. Modulo 10. So the ones would be number modulo 10. Don't forget the semicolon. If, you, if I want to take... The tens. Hmm, we should do two things here. We need to somehow. So if I do modulo 10, if I had 12 and I do modulo 12, 10, would I get the tens? If I didn't have the 3 anymore, if I just had 12, do we know how to get the 10? Do we know how to get the 2? We need the 2, right? The same thing. So how do I get to have the number just the two first magnitude numbers? Hint, we need to divide it. So remember when we take a whole number and we divide it, we just get the whole thing. Yes. Exactly. So the 10 would be number divide by 10, but that's yet not the 10s, right? But we need to do another thing. We need to, so that would just give us, well, that would just give us 12, right? But we need the 2. So you, I think you said that. What do we need to do? How do we get just the 2? We need the, the same thing, right? So we can do Module 10 then, and we're going to get the two. We can also do it like in two separate lines. Um, we can do like this. We can do this, and then and then tens would be two, right? Now, how do we get the hundreds then? How do we get the one? You divide again. Yes. Well, what are you going to divide again? The, you're going to take the tens, modulus 10, and divide that by 10. But tens, mo tens modulus 10 will give you the two. Well, so, if you divide that by 10, it'll give you the, the ones. Or... Well, you just have two here. It's already just two. 
how do you get well we can always go back here and we can divide this number maybe in wow. 100 we just subtract. yeah uh, not subtract we're just gonna do division we're gonna do number and divide it by 100 what are we gonna get then the if this the one okay let's try to do it let's open the same project and let's do don't forget the semicolons um and yeah and the int let's try it let's give it a few minutes okay and then we're gonna then i'm gonna show you the result but. <clears throat> okay guys I want to show you the, the, the results just to go over it with you to show you how I did but I looked I looked at your project and it seems very good all of them so I'm just gonna go step by step to show you mine so basically I'm asking the user here to enter three digit number. And uh, first of all, I declare a number, digits, uh, tens and hundreds, okay? That's gonna be my ones, tens and hundreds. First of all, I'm, and don't forget, never forget the semicolon. And also, as you can see, in one line, I can declare a few variables, okay? First of all, I'm gonna see out, I'm gonna print to the screen, please enter three digit number. You see, I don't forget the semicolon. Then I see in the number, then um, let's see, what do I do? I do the same as you. The digits will be the module 10. The, um, then I'm gonna divide the number by 10. So I only get the two numbers. And then I get the tens by another module. And then I get the hundreds by just divided by 10. And remember, these are whole numbers. So we don't get fractions here, just the whole number. And let's see the logic. I use if else. So if hundreds plus one, look, equal is two equals here to check for equal. If it's the tens, go inside. If the tens plus one is the digits, go inside and write it's consecutive. Else, not consecutive, and another else. Why do I have two? Because this, if, if we found that maybe the hundreds and the tens are consecutive, but the tens and the ones are not consecutive, so I'm writing it here. And if and and this is if nothing, like if the tens and hundreds are nothing. I just did a few more checks, but basically I could just put it in the end. That would be fine as well. Um, yeah. So that's what I wanted to show you. And now let's continue. 